Hi guys, welcome back to a, another reading vlog. Today is Monday. It is a dark <laughs> and spooky day out. It's been raining for the past few days, um, so it kind of made it the perfect time to start a novel that I've been meaning to pick up for a while. It is the Dark Academics Book Club book of the month for August. Wow. If you are new to the Dark Academics Book Club, all the information is always in my description box right at like the bottom if you just keep scrolling. Anyway, the book is Mexican Gothic. I started this last night when it was storming, raining, and it's still doing that today and tomorrow. The whole week is just supposed to be spooky town uh, USA forecast. So Mexican Gothic, uh, I am now... I'm now on chapter four, which is 37 pages through, and I'm really, really enjoying it. I think basically I would enjoy this book no matter what. The Gothic is one of my favorite genres ever, uh, and it's a series of tropes, the Gothic tropes that I don't mind at all when they are continuously reused and recycled. I love them. I will always um, be so happy to read them no matter what, and this book is no different. So basically in this one we are following our protagonist named Noemi, who gets this very distressing letter from her cousin who is in a city outside of Mexico City where Noemi lives. So she has just arrived at High Place or the gothic mansion that her cousin is staying at. In the letter that her cousin Catalina wrote, she wrote about ghosts and spiders and fleshless things and all this really um, upsetting and unusual and spooky stuff that was going on. However, when the Wemi arrives and finally talks to her cousin, Catalina is like, I just have tuberculosis. There's nothing to see here. So there's definitely some really scary, spooky things going on. We have this cast of English characters from England because no, uh, no, Catalina married into an English family. Her husband Virgil, uh, her cousin Francis, who is Noemi's age, and then the kind of patriarch of the family, or Howard Doyle, who is a very old, decrepit, dying man. I am so excited for this. Like I said, it is the perfect weather to read this book. I'm following along with the audiobook and. And I think I'm probably just gonna just binge it over the next few days and uh, hopefully finish it really soon because I'm really really enjoying it. It's a story that I want to keep reading. I want to find out what's going on. I also want to say that it's giving me all of the crim crim crimson peak uh, atmosphere vibes setting. It's so similar to crimson peak. I can't say this word. If you've seen the movie with Tom Hiddleston, basically just this very spooky gothic movie with ghosts and uh, really scary stuff going on. I love that movie and this, like it's really weird, but the colors in this novel and the colors mentioned and the whole color scheme of Crimson Peak is really like shining through for me in this book and I'm loving it. Anyway, 
I also started a nonfiction book for this month and that is The Silk Roads, A New History of the World by Peter Frankopan. Uh, this is a really, really big book. It's also a very long audiobook that I'm following along with as well. I'm now almost 60 pages through. I started this a couple days ago. Um, and I'm really enjoying it. So far it's been really, really detailed, uh, going through basically a little bit of history. Uh, right now we're just following the decline and fall of the Roman Empire and the effects that it has on Constantinople, which becomes like the new capital, um, and basically just mostly stuff that I've like learned in classical studies classes so far, but um, super soon we're going to be moving in to the main uh, dish of this novel, which novel nonfiction, which is obviously the Silk Roads in and of itself. So I'm loving it. It's really like exciting and I love history books um, that like make you excited and make you want to see what happened even though it's it's history and you can just know basically what happens at any point. It's really good. Really, really good so far. So I'm really um, excited about this nonfiction, which is such a fun feeling. So that is the Silk Roads. I'm also, of course, still reading A Midsummer Night's Dream. I'm just going to mention this really briefly. I hope to read a lot more of this today. I'm also buddy reading this with a friend, and I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm going to try to read more of it today for sure, um, and then I will let you guys know what I think of it when I'm done. The plans for today are I want to just have a really cozy day because it's so cozy and uh, just chill and rainy and spooky in here. I'm about to film a video. I also have some really exciting mail that came in. Um, which you guys will see probably in a video coming very very soon um, and it's something I get to kind of build and put together uh, and decorate the space with. I'll probably show you guys what the bookshelves look like now because I'm so excited that they're finally all up and done um, and put together and packed so yeah. I think I'm gonna go make a cup of peppermint tea and film this video and I will see you when I am decorating the space. Good evening, it's a little bit later now, it's like 7.30 and I wanted to come back and talk about Mexican Gothic and I'm still really, really liking it even though um, at this point I've kind of decided that 
I'm not loving the writing. I find it very awkward and stilted in places. But on the whole, I'm really, really loving the story. I just want to like tell you guys a little bit about it because it's so fun to talk about dark, spooky things. I've got my pajamas on because it's a little bit colder this evening, which I just, first of all, I just want it to be autumn. I want it to be fall, like right now. Please. Are you laughing at me? It's everyone's favorite season, okay? So basically in this house we have um, Howard Doyle, who was the old man who had previously run this silver mining uh, company and situation around High Place, which is the manor and the mansion in which the rest of the surviving family resides. I just found out a little bit about the background of the family and what happened to some of its deceased family members, which was really spooky and creepy. There's also been a number of epidemics mention, mentioned that have kind of struck and killed miners and family members alike of the Doyle household and then mysteriously vanished only to reappear um, years and months later in this kind of circular repetitive pattern, which is interesting because of course um, Noemi's cousin uh, has been diagnosed by the family's private doctor uh, with having tuberculosis, even though Noemi does not believe this is true, so she's just gone into town to demand a second opinion of the local doctor, uh, and he starts telling her all these things. This other um, person in the town begins to tell her all these things about the family. There's a lot of really, really creepy stuff going on with Howard and then his son, Virgil, who is the husband of um, Noemi's cousin, and all this kind of weird semi- and just a whole bunch of other weird, spooky stuff. Noemi keeps having dreams of questionable things that she thinks is related to the wallpaper in her room. There seems to be some sort of poisoning going on, but I think right now I'm going to read a little bit of A Midsummer Night's Dream because I've really been neglecting that and, and I want to do a little bit of reading today. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm just going to go right back to listening to Mexican Gothic, so. It is Tuesday now. It's early afternoon and I have some reading updates because I forgot to mention a couple days ago that I finished a book and thereby finished um, the series and I was so sad about it. I'm still so sad that it's over and that is the Illuminae Files series. Yeah, so I read the last one, Obsidio, um, by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. I... Uh, it was so good. It was so good. I know a few of you guys have picked up uh, the Illuminae series recently and you all <laughs> seem to be loving it and I'm just, I'm so sad that it's over. I didn't want to finish it. It's also been so long since I finished a series in the first place. I'm the worst for finishing series and I will just wait months and months and sometimes years in a few cases of series that are on my shelves that I haven't finished yet, but Illuminae was just like way too good. I wanted to find out what happened as soon as possible, so it finally came in on Libby and I just read it in a period of like two very sad, anxious days where I just wanted to know what happened. Anyway, if you finished Illuminae or if you've read Obsidio, please come, please come talk to me about it because I need to talk to someone about it. I loved it, as always. I still think I love Gemina the best. Where are you? Right here. I still think I love Gemina, the second one, the best of the series, but I really loved um, how they finish it off. And yeah, anyway, I've also been listening to tons of Mexican Gothic all this morning and last night. I'm now actually almost halfway through. I'm 127 pages through. Um, there's so many elements in this book that you're not sure like which elements are actually harming people. Like there's so many 
chances and so many things that are so harmful. We've got obviously the silver mine that is now abandoned. Then we have these weird mushrooms and one of our characters, Francis, he is obsessed with mushrooms, collecting them, uh, tracing their spore patterns and all this really weird stuff. We have so much mold. This is the moldiest house in the Seven Kingdoms and um, Noemi always kind of comments on how mold is just growing over everything. There's tons of like real mushrooms and then there's things that have a lot of mushroom patterns like the wallpaper and silverware and it's so strange. Um, and then we have her cousin who she thinks has tuberculosis. There's mention of diseases and epidemics like I said. So you're just like not really sure what is the main harmful thing going on. It's a very big mix of things. There's a lot of like gothic references going on and I just I I'm really really liking it like I said I don't think the writing is the best thing ever but in this case I really I'm not here for the writing I'm just here for the gothic and I'm hooked and I want to know more so yeah I think I'm gonna go listen to more of this like literally right now because I just want to finish it it's not a very long book and I will let you guys know how much more gothic we're getting this morning I woke up there was a mist a fog thick fog coating everything and it was perfect. All right, hi guys. So I'm finally done filming and doing camera work stuff things for the day. Um, I have my tea and I actually just fell asleep on the couch. Um, and now it's like five something. So I just want to change into really, really cozy, honestly, maybe just pajamas at this point. What do I have to lose? I think this whole week, I'm just going to keep lamenting that, uh, autumn hasn't arrived yet because I just want to wear like sweatpants and the, uh, big comfy sweaters but uh, I think we might just have to go with the avocado shirt for now. it's so full hiya good morning um these are like the first words i'm speaking today i got up really really early this morning intended to get some things done and then i i fell back asleep on the couch so it's friday today and before i got my day started um i wanted to sit down and do some reading updates because i have a lot to talk about i also got some book mail where did i put it behind me. I also got some book mail that I'm going to open right now and um, I just want to talk about what I'm reading as well. Um, so I'm just going to start with Mexican Gothic. I'm now on page 250. 250? I'm now 250 pages through. I literally have 50 pages left so I think this is going to get finished today. I marked some stuff because um, a lot of this book got really confusing for a little bit until um, I like sat down and thought about it and then I was like wow that is intensely insanely gross and cool. I love it. Give me more. There's so many disgusting things going on in this book and I love it. I love when authors don't shy away from trying to gross out the reader because I just, I'm, I'm so down for that. I love really gothic-y, gross, disgusting things, horrifying things going on in books. I mentioned before that the writing was not 
I just didn't think it was super good and I would still say that but at this point the content and what the writing is trying to express and the ideas and the concepts that are um, going down in Mexican Gothic I just don't care about the writing anymore because for me like what is actually going on is so good so up my alley um, that I just don't care if the writing and the description and the kind of performance of it isn't that good because the concept itself is just amazing I love the commentary that's going on in here I've seen a lot of reviews saying that this book is really confusing and it definitely was because there was this huge uh, part that just happened and I was like but like I said after I kind of sat down and talked myself through it I was like whoa whoa um and i'm just i'm really 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 liking it i also made some progress on the silk roads let me just find where i am the bookmark that i'm using for this is like falling apart i've had it for a few years on the back it says it's a 14th century gothic ivory book cover with a gilded symbol every time i use this bookmark i feel like mildly guilty about it because <laughs> i'll just tell you i found it at like a secondhand bookstore years ago wedged in like the cover of this big book that i didn't want to buy because it was a big book and i didn't want to buy it um so i just took the bookmark out of it and left and i have felt so so bad about it for literally years like this was probably like four or five years ago that i got this bookmark and i still feel really bad that i like took the bookmark out of a book without buying the book and brought okay anyway i'm 120 pages um it's interesting because almost every chapter of this book is like a different road a different way of looking at the silk road of describing it of seeing what was going on so for example um the first one was the road to a christian east so we talk about christianity and then it talks about islam and then it talks about the road to concord with the kind of meshing together and eventual uh, subtle agreements between religions and a very kind of lenient system. We just had a chapter on the road of furs, talking about the trade of furs from the people and the tribes on the steps of the road. Yeah, mostly right now we're talking about uh, Slavic uh, peoples and what they were doing and everything like that, and Vikings, which is so interesting because the book does like kind of yell at you that, oh, you thought Vikings were predominantly more of a western exploratory thing but no it was actually an eastern exploratory thing still really really loving it so interesting so interesting um so i'm glad that i'm a little bit more of the way through with my stolen bookmark oh okay and i also have some mail from book depository oh stunning mm, smells like the one month shipping time that book depository takes to get to canada so i picked up thirst for love by yukio mishima uh last month because i saw it on sale on book depository um if you don't know yukio mishima is a very famous classic japanese author i have one of his works on my bookshelf uh but i decided to pick up this one as well because i would love to read them all at some point in my life i don't really know much about the synopsis i basically just decided to get it because it was like deep deep fried discount um but the back says after the early death of her philandering husband atsuko moves into her father-in-law's house soon she finds herself in love with the young servant saburo uh tormented by his indifference yet invigorated by her desire she makes her move with catastrophic consequences so i'm hoping and thinking that this is going to be a very quiet um, character study book of maybe family drama, household drama for sure, romance, um, and ultimately I believe it is a tragedy, so yeah, that was my book mail. Plans for today are probably gonna finish Mexican Gothic tonight. I've really been loving reading this at the nighttime because then I get mildly spooked um, and who doesn't like being unsettled? Let's be honest, being unsettled is so fun when it's in like controlled, settled environment. Um, so yeah, I will see you guys very soon. I just, uh, I just wanna finish Mexican Gothic, but I don't wanna finish it, but I do. Okay, also, I just wanted to show you guys these earrings that my insanely talented friend made me for my birthday. Um, I'm obsessed with these. These are so cute. What the hell? Who let these things be this cute? She made me some book earrings. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. They're incredible. And then, as if things couldn't get any cooler, 
She made me tea bags. <laughs> Hey guys, so it's Saturday now and I just wanted to wrap this vlog up by saying that I did actually manage to finish Mexican Gothic. We got a full week of, or almost a full week of being able to read this book, talk to you guys about it, uh, chat about it. Uh, in the end, I gave it four stars. Uh, I think conceptually this book could have been like a five star read for me, but the writing and the way that the concepts were carried through just were really really lacking um and i'll have more kind of critiques and thoughts obviously in my wrap up and then the dark academics book club will of course be hosting a live show for this book it will be over on lucy's channel on uh, crescent pages so all the details will be coming for that soon but in the meantime i think a lot of the reviews that say this book is really confusing that's not really the fault of the reader in this case i don't think i just don't think the concepts were um really explained super well a lot of tropes and mysteries and mechanisms of the gothic um are meant to be really deceiving and confusing in a very specific understandable way but i think mexican gothic like it tried to do a lot of stuff and it tried to make you think a lot of things and um in the end i did give it four stars because i just really 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 enjoyed what was going on but if you're looking for great writing i wouldn't say look for it here but if you're looking to be spooked out and um mildly disgusted and just have yourself a spooky old time i would recommend um this book anyway i'm really happy to be back making reading vlogs and everything like that i will have some more videos coming soon and now i get to pick my next audiobook read which will be fun and yeah anyway i hope you're all keeping well i hope you're doing well and I will see you very soon in my next video.